Today I want to talk about active listening. Um, I've been walking around the camp now for a couple of days and, uh, you know, seeing people having very impassioned, impassioned conversations. Uh, this is a topic that draws uh, a lot of emotions and there are a lot of ideas being thrown about. And in general, I find that discussing ideas can be very difficult. It can be really hard to have a conversation that is in any way productive about ideas, uh, especially when people's emotions are also behind it. So I thought that a workshop like this would help everybody sort of navigate, negotiate these differences. Uh, I also noticed that given that the slogan is we are the 99%, we end up gathering people from a pretty wide political spectrum, uh, which means that, you know, especially in these sort of inter-camp conversations, and, and between people and people walking by, they're willing to stop and have a conversation. Yeah, it's important to make somebody feel heard, because if you would like to be heard, you're going to make them have to feel, you know, feel heard first. So I thought this might be a nice way to do it. I thought before I got to my very obvious steps that are posted on my poster here, uh, I would introduce a really obvious distinction that is also very profound. Uh, the distinction is self and other. It's about as simple as you can get there. Without getting in any way really intense about it, if you ever use the word I or me to refer to yourself, then I'll call you a self. So any selves in the audience? Yeah, you identify as self. If you don't identify as self, I'm going to ask you why. Identify as self? Are you a self? Use the word I? Yes. Okay, excellent. Uh, so that's, we all know that what that is. How about other? If you see somebody who's other, point at them. Don't be afraid. Oh, y'all pointed me. Great, yes. It's, it was actually pr uh, pretty obvious that those were others because you all did it very quickly. Uh, I'll call in my claim from the audience here. Amy, how did you know that I was an other? Because you're not me. Okay, and how did you know that? I don't know what you're thinking and feeling and doing. So the fact that my thoughts are all in here and yours are all in there is a pretty obvious point, and yet it kind of makes a world of difference when we're trying to communicate with one another. Um, <laughs> right, uh, and the fact that, you know, I'm standing here and you're over there, so this the fact that we're inhabiting different bodies, these are really obvious things, but on account of the fact that I'm in my head and you're in yours, makes makes communication relatively difficult. Hold on. Okay. What else makes conversation really difficult with two impassioned people who are trying to discuss ideas? I am taking audience participation here. What makes any conversation about an important topic hard to have? Yes? Uh, you tend to, myself anyway, I tend to run on at the back. Okay, great. So, uh, you know, if you're sharing your idea, you'll be very preoccupied with it and you'll kind of keep talking. And that's hard if somebody else wants to be heard also. Thank you, yeah. Someone walks by, spews a bunch of profanity, and then just walks off believing that he's right. Sure, I mean, that's not even a conversation. No, we'll talk about all. people who are having conversations. What makes it hard to talk about important things with one another? Yeah. A lack of open mind. A lack of an open mind. Great. Uh, and again, it comes back to that self and other. Um, the fact is, I've got my own opinions, and it just so happens I agree with all of them. Do you all kind of feel the same way? You end up agreeing with your own opinions? Uh, so on, account of, on account of that, it can be very difficult to make space for, for another person for something that you clearly aren't on board with yet. People, it, it's very hard. I have that problem myself to be open-minded for someone else's ideas. Any other reasons why important conversations are hard to have productively? Yes. Anger. Anger, great. Just, if you care about it, it's going to be really hard to listen. Something else? Different language. Grief? Grief. Wow, thank you. That's a good one too. Different language. Different language. That's a great one. Whether that's very literally English or Spanish or a different language. Different English, different English. Yes. Two people can both be speaking English and yet not really know, you know, what the other one is saying. Uh, I could run on and on and on about justice or something, and the fact is, it can make no sense to you because you're thinking justice means this, while well, I think it means that. So language being ambiguous is going to always cause, you know, cause problems. 
All right, that's actually all the philosophical part. I'll get to the actual lesson. Um, <laughs> the, the power, I think, of active listening is that while we're having important conversations about important ideas, um, we get carried away, we talk over each other, and active listening kind of slows down the process. It says, all right, you're going to make your points, and before I get to make mine, I'm going to make sure that I really understand your points, that you feel like I understood your points. <laughs> Um, <laughs> all right, so I'll continue. They're really actually basic steps, and I'll warn you, once I finish teaching them, I'm going to sort of give a prompt, and you'll be turning to the people around you and, and, and trying this, all right? So get stoked for that. You'll be talking to each other momentarily. I don't need okay. these notes. It's on here. Evelyn. Hey. Right. Evelyn. How to look, how to, make, how to make someone feel like you are listening and that you care. How do you make someone feel? <laughs> after that, it's okay. Look like. It. All right. Look like. It. Okay. Step number one is probably the easiest step. Look, look like you're listening, yeah, like which is great. How would you look like you're listening? Eye contact. Eye contact is a pretty easy oh. one. Right. How else? Don't talk when they're talking. What's that? Right. Don't talk when they're That's talking. That's a great one. If I'm talking while you're talking, you'll probably guess I'm not listening. That's a great one. Thank you. And uh, I've got a lot of friends who, while I talk to them, look like this. I think not looking at your phone yeah. is a good way of, of showing that you're listening. Excellent. I love it. Um, the other day on the sidewalk, there was a guy with sunglasses and headphones on having a really intense conversation with some protesters. I thought that was kind of interesting because he, like, looked plugged at all the various, uh, you know, face holes there. So look like you're listening. Waiting patiently, not going like this. Obvious points, how to look like you're listening. Step two is a great one. If I had to get rid of all the other steps and keep one, I would keep step two which I'll put as reflect and or ask for clarification. Um, it can seem kind of simplistic. I would say don't necessarily echo. Paraphrasing is better than echoing. Uh, somebody makes a point to me and I say, oh, so you're saying that, and then I try to make sure I understand what they're saying by, by repeating it. Now, what's great about that step is that if I got it wrong, they can correct me. And once they correct me, I can try again. That's reflection. Clarification, I think, is a nice move if you think you disagree with them or think that you're offended by what they're saying. Oftentimes, I will be offended by what someone's saying, and it turns out I didn't understand what they were getting at. So asking your question, saying, wait, it sounds like you're saying this. You know, and you can say, like, oh, th this seems kind of offensive. It sounds like you're saying this. Then they get to, then they actually get to, you know, own their own words and take possession of it and, uh, and let you know if you're on the right track. So that's step two. Step three is a bonus one that I put in there. It's more for showing that you care. If somebody's trying to share themselves and their ideas with you, um, asking them more questions is nice. Often, if somebody says something and then I say, oh, yeah, that reminds me of my thing, it's not showing that I really care what they're getting at, right? If you tell somebody a story and they're like, oh yeah, the same thing happened to me, and then they tell you their story. There's not, you know, there's no real sharing happening. And then lastly, this is sort of like a higher level one. If you can do this one, you're very impressive. Acknowledge the emotions or values that are behind what they're saying. And again, this comes back to the kind of conversations people are having around here. There's a lot of reasoning going on, but the fact is there are deeply held values and emotions that are motivating all of this reasoning. And when somebody is making a case to you, they, they want to know not only that you understand, but also that you see what's behind it. They want, they want to be acknowledged as a person who cares about something. So, you know, to be able to say, oh, so, you know, are you saying this? And they say yes. And you say, oh, so, you know, it sounds like, uh, you know, your sense of justice is really motivating you. Or it sounds, you know, often getting to a deep value is getting to maybe the fundamental concept that's at the base of what they're trying to get at. Um, if they're not being as philosophical, it's still very powerful to be able to acknowledge their emotions. If you say, oh, uh, you know, you sound really angry about that, or that sounds hard, all of these things just make somebody feel heard. Now, another addition that I've added to this it's my new favorite section. How to know if somebody feels heard. And I almost see this like a game because it's really a beautiful thing. Because if somebody feels heard, they're going to automatically say one of these things almost all of the time. 
and you can tell that the conversation's going well because they say something like, right, or yes, or yeah, or exactly, or thank you. And you'll find yourself doing it too. There's something about feeling like you've made a connection that somebody else gets what you're saying that you just can't help it. You end up saying one of those things. All right, to recap real quickly, because I've been talking for a while. Look like you're listening. Uh, reflect back what they're saying or ask for clarification. Um, you know, if you feel you know, like you're up to it, ask for follow-up questions. Acknowledge the emotions or values that are informing what they want to say, what they're what they're trying to say. The other side. And again, now because I have a little crowd here, I just want to say why I'm doing this. Uh, I find that this movement, because it has this 99% identity, that we're drawing people from a wide range of political identities, and so. You know, if we're going to get anywhere, I feel like it's pretty valuable in our conversations to not talk past each other. And that's what active listening does. It makes sure that when you speak, it lands. You can see that it lands in, and I get it, and, and vice versa. All right. So I prepared an exercise. Let's see about our timing here. Wonderful. All right. Uh, I'll just do two of them, right? Because I don't know how much, I don't know how long I can keep a crowd like this. At a certain point, you know, I can just break this down and we can just have conversations with one another. So, uh, turn to somebody, and uh, you know, I'll do sort of two minutes per side here, and just ask them, "What are you here for?" And after they tell you, see if you can make them feel heard, and then tell them what you're here for and try to make them feel heard. I'll give you a few minutes to try that out. <laughs> now I'm going to descend here and try that out too. I'm going to give you a couple minutes so you can't get too far into it. May I? What are you here for? To drive to work sometimes. Dead end job you there. So you feel like you were motivated then by the things you know that were happening with your family encouragement to come and see what it was about. The fact that I can't find a job either. So, so in addition to you know your family, also you feel like your personal motivation for coming today. Motivation. Mm -hmm. That means like. Um, uh... I was motivated to come here right, like, take a word because I didn't know what it was last week, no, and I no. wanted to find out what it was, um, and I felt that was during the media blackout, so I couldn't really find out any information on what Occupy Boston was doing and whether it was the same or different from Occupy Wall Street. So at that time, I figured the best way to find out that information was to physically come here and talk to people that had started pitching tents and were, you know, doing meetings and guide and stuff like that. I don't know how many people are listening, but I'll try to. I can see that you're listening because you're looking like you're listening. Thank you. If you are listening, look like you're listening, and then I'll be able to tell. All right, I want to try one more. Uh, and again, if you want to have a, <laughs> you want to have a conversation, that's fine. But feel free to just share with the person and have them listen back actively, and then do that to them. If you want to get into it, get into it. Uh, I'm gonna put a question for you, and you can answer three ways. And and I'll, I'll put it this way, all right? Uh, do you think that this movement is here to promote reform or revolution? Revolution. Now, hold on, hold on. That's <laughs> the third option is the third option is why is that a dumb question? So turn to somebody and share with them. You know, have them ask you and share with them whether you are here to promote reform, revolution, or it's a it's a it's a dumb option. All right. So try this one. Three possibilities: revolution or uh, something about. Definitely. Sort of a middle of the road kind of guy. I've always been. Thank you. Sure. And I think it's a matter of getting people that are uh, sort of sitting and waiting for somebody else to make things happen to take to show up for one. You know, I, th I think this huge crowd is getting attention because I've been in a lot of earlier demonstrations and it was sizable numbers. No newspapers were present, yeah. no uh, 
TV, no nothing. And only when you get into somebody's face, unfortunately, you begin to get attention. I don't, I don't like that method, but it seems to be a method that tends to work. Anyway, this is actually a very polite way of getting to somebody's face. And it's actually quite well organized. Yeah, it's quite well organized. So because of that, you know, I think that there may be still space for reform. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm a great believer you've got to vote and vote yeah. and vote ah, okay. and get your people in. So, and if you know, it sounds, it sounds like your primary. Else, you've got to continue that process. Yeah. 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 More sure. if, we have a, if we go the other way, it just has never worked. You know what I'm saying? Believe it or not, at least for 20 years. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, well, I mean, what I'm, what I'm expecting is that suddenly people will change. People's minds will change. And suddenly new things will happen. That, I mean, to me, that's what revolution is, not violence. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's just people will suddenly see things different. So reform seems. And I think maybe it's actually happening. I know it's possible. It happens sometimes, some places. But suddenly people just see things differently. And things change because of that. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. I like facts, too. Facts are things are, you know, more. Sure. You know, you know, you know, the democratic, socialist, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Not to yeah. hear. Yeah. You know, so I don't I'm not going to be not on this side. Why not? For the time, we need to create the U.S. Uh huh. Why don't you necessarily want that? Facts, facts, high 40. Yeah, it's kind of boring. There's no real. Like, for example, no real. I see, I see. Yeah. So, so while they, they, they have the whole sort of wealth sharing down, uh, there's just something dry about the whole thing. It's not designed as much growth. That's really interesting. Sure, I mean, people make that critique in terms of, you know, when you modify capitalism, they say that it, it, you won't get as much excitement and innovation. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.